So first, greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Oh, hello, my friend. How are you? How oh, fine. Thank you very much. It's only one hour difference here in London, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Just one hour difference. So it's the same. It was hard to come out of bed of always. You you know the same, <laughs> I think. So um, with Deadpool, you're now a part of the big Marvel comic universe. How is it? It's a wonderful um, feeling to be a part of Deadpool, you know. I mean, the Marvel Universe is something which has interested me and excited me for years. And, 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 and you know, I've, I've been a comic book fan for a long time. So obviously, you know, it, it's interesting to be a part of it. But it's not necessarily a positive thing to be a part of something just for the sake of being a part of it. I'm proud of this project because I'm proud of Deadpool uh, of what we've created I'm proud of Tim Miller and Ryan Reynolds and all the rest of the cast and I'm proud of what Rhett Reese and, and, and Paul Wernick the, the writers have done so you know I, I would be immensely proud of this project if it wasn't part of a universe that I'm already excited and interested by but the fact that, that, that I am such a comic book geek is just makes it such a bonus so um, you're proud always uh, also because um, this project took so many years that it come us out it's always it's, it's, uh, was put on ice and Ryan Reynolds fight for it this is to say it w was worse to fight for it yeah it was definitely worth the fight I mean you know the arts are supposed to innovate you know uh, whichever art we're talking about with this painting, music, or, or, or anything, fashion, whatever, they're supposed to innovate, they're supposed to push forward, we're, you know, they're supposed to take the things that we've already seen and we're already interested by and, 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 and you know, the influences that, that sort of shape our, our, um, our specific morals and views, and then we're supposed to change them and we're supposed to, you know, turn them on their head and, 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 and make them new and, 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 and be brave. And that's exactly what we've done on this project. You know, you have so many superhero movies that have been made. But this is one which is brave. You know, this is Tim Miller and, 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 and Ryan and, and myself and all of the cast really trying to do something faithful to what Deadpool is. And what Deadpool is is completely different from the rest of the Marvel Universe. So we haven't set out just to try and be different. You know, we're not trying to just... We weren't just trying to make a new movie for the sake of it. It was all born out of the necessity to represent Deadpool in, in his in his truest way because, you know, sometimes you can have characters which are kind of interesting, but they need to be adapted for cinema to make them really interesting. Deadpool is already interesting. Deadpool didn't need a makeover and a, you know, a brain surgery. Deadpool um, needed to be represented accurately. And, um, and, 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 and I'm so proud that we've done that. How did you prepare for this role? Um, did you physical training and read the comics from your character, Francis, a.k.a. Uh, Ajax? Yeah, I read, I read the, um, all of the comics. You know, I was in Golden Age Comics, Golden Age Collectibles, rather, in, um, in Vancouver pretty much every day in the comic book store, just geeking out with, with my friend in there, Hank Patterson, and, and, and we would, you know, discuss comics and, 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 and discuss, um, you know, lots of, lots of, lots of different uh, comic ranges and stuff, not just Marvel, and, you know, I was reading comics every day, and, you know, I was, I was researching a lot in, in, into um, serial killers, specifically for my character, because I was interested in, 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 in the notion of absence, the notion of, uh, of sociopaths and to some extent psychopaths having rather than something extra about them which is evil they have something which is uh, lacking in them a lack of morality a lack of consequence lack of social responsibility lack of compassion lack of empathy and because my character had no nerve endings that was what was important to me when, when forming the character so it was a mixture of getting into the mindset of of, 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 of the, 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 the characters of Deadpool in that universe, um, researching the mentality and the wiring that, that, that people like um, Harold Shipman and, 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 you know, lots of um, serial killers, the, the mentalities that they have, but then on top of that, training extremely hard physically. You know, I was 
was training twice a day. I was doing martial arts in the morning and then um, strength and conditioning in the gym in the afternoon. I was I was really training hard for um, for the whole shoot and and and, and, and um, you know I, luckily I enjoy comics. Luckily I enjoy researching my characters and luckily I enjoy working out. So you know I was I was pretty much uh, 24 hours a day uh, preoccupied with the character and the project. So uh, now you're playing uh, Ajax is, is the evil character. Is it more fun to play evil as a good guy, or is it more challenging? It's fun being a good guy playing an evil character. I might, it is very fun, you know. Only if they're if they're if they're interesting characters, you know. It's not fun just being horrible for the sake of it. That's really boring and soul destroying in a lot of ways. And you know, you've, I played a couple of characters which were just bad guys for no reason. And uh, after a while, you just kind of realize actually there's not that much fun to this because there's no uh, there's nothing enduring about them or there's nothing sort of human about them. But but it is fun attaching, trying to, you know, make these characters feel human and, and find a point of empathy. And, and, and it is fun doing horrible things when you're a nice person <laughs> all the time, you know. I spent, yeah, my life is very normal and peaceful and, and, and nice and pleasant in a lot of ways. And um, it's very nice to go to the dark side um, on set and, and, and to explore it on set in a, in a safe and controlled environment. I said I wanted to say it's it's a fun to bring your dark side out of it to show you I could be different when something had got wrong in your childhood a little bit. 100 percent, 100 percent. I mean, you know, we try and change these characters and make them into different, really different versions. You know, different. We try to make all of our characters have such different identities. You know, to try to make them so different from us. Mm -hmm. really in truth what we're doing is making characters that are us in alternative realities you know us with different upbringings different parenting different schooling different you know different environments and, and um yes sadly when i play these horrible characters it does cross my mind that that could have been me and that i could have that i am capable of you know reveling in uh the dark side as such and um I'm just so glad and so thankful that. Um, so sometimes it's like. My life is not like that. Yes, it's something like in our all of our childhoods that we play um, cowboys and bandits, and so mm -hmm. it's it's a fun part sometimes. I think. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. exactly. So um, you mentioned uh, Tim Miller. Uh, it's Deadpool is one is his first real directing movie. Uh, how was it to work with him? I fucking love Tim Miller. You know, I really, really do. You know, as a friend, and I'm glad that I call him a friend now, and, and, and um, I value his, his, his friendship and his opinion and um, and all of that. But, you know, aside from that, he, he's a man with a vision, you know. He's very suited to my style of acting in the sense that I like to be, I like people to be very clear. I like peer directions. I like to be molded. I like to be pitted and poked and, and, and uh, challenged and, 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 and pushed one way, then pulled the other, and then, you know, made as big as a train and then squashed as big as a, as small as a mouse or whatever. And, and, and he's very much like that, you know. He, I loved his notes. I loved his approach to, to getting the best out of me. By the end of it, we had a really brutally honest relationship where we were just, you know, We were so. Uh, we, if anybody heard us talking to each other, they'd think that we hated each other because we'd just be swearing at each other and being you know, abusing each other. But it, you know, it was a relationship based on trust, and um, and I loved working with him. And you know, there's a couple of projects that we talked about for the future, and 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 you know, I hope that he can be one of those directors that I can have a a long-term relationship with because um, he was uh, he was a joy to work with, and, and I believe that. Um, He really got the best out of me. In this movie, you have tr uh, have spectacular action scenes, and even the last movie of yours, uh, Transporter Refueled. Are these fights a challenge to you? This to look that spectacular? I mean, the transport was a challenge. Deadpool wasn't so much of a challenge because I'd already had the foundation of Transporter, 
So I felt a lot more comfortable with the action sequences and all of that stuff. And I think I was able to bring a bit more flair. I think in the transport, I was just kind of trying to get away with it, <laughs> trying to, um, you know, be good enough. Whereas in the Deadpool, I was kind of like, okay, now now I really want to, you know, go for it. And um, I love it. I really do. You know, I love the training. I love hanging out with the stunt guys. You know, we had an amazing team of Phil Silvera and Rob Alonso. They were incredible, you know. So I love spending time with them. And, 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 and you know, they were some of my closest um friends on on, on, on on jobs, you know, and, and um mm. I talk about Tim Miller, how close I was to him and it's the same thing with the stunt team, you know, and, and we were really a, a brotherhood and um it was a it was great. It was a challenge, you know, when you're on like the gimbal forty foot up in the air and, you know, you're strapped in and you're jumping around with knives and axes and stuff, you know, it, it, in some ways it is a real challenge but you just try your best and, you know, you just, you put the work in in training and, and you just get on with it. And, and, and it's quite fun. You know, I wouldn't want, um, good challenges and there's bad challenges and I wouldn't want it to be, uh, I wouldn't want it to, to sound like I'm, I'm talking about it in a negative way because I, I enjoyed it so much. When the audience sees these fights, they are mostly count seconds with luck minutes, but it takes a long time to make them and what would you say to them how long to talk a planning choreography the training what you would you say to them oh jesus it takes a long time <laughs> i mean it's crazy like we could you could have a dialogue scene which is like you know a two-page dialogue scene and you might you probably wouldn't rehearse it with anyone a lot of the time you just come in and you know you might spend an hour rehearsing And then you might spend, let's say, five hours on it. So the whole thing in total, you've spent six hours on it. And then you move on. It's done forever. With a fighting scene, and, and, and that may work out as, a, let's say, 45 seconds in, in the movie or something, something like that. For a fighting sequence, I mean, there were days that I remember we spent a whole day on literally maybe two seconds of the fight on just three very small, intricate moves. And we would do that a lot, you know. We would spend hours just on one hit or one movement. Sometimes we, we would obviously be able to catch things quicker, but when there's wire work and all of that, it takes so long. And, 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 and you know, let's say the, 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 the final fight with Deadpool, I mean, I would not want to think about how many, how many days we spent. I mean, it was at least, I don't know, maybe I spent 10 days you know, working on that. I mean, there was doubles, so some days I was fighting Ryan, some days I was fighting the doubles, some days I was fighting the other doubles, and, you know, there was so many um, people involved, but, but, yeah, it takes a long time, you know, and, and, and it does pay off, though, because it does look spectacular, and it does make you feel a certain way when you watch it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a testimony to the skill of Phil Silvera and Rob Alonso to, to be able to make choreography that looks that real and that you can live live out each beat um, as a performer and hopefully as a viewer. But um, there's an incredible amount of hard work that goes into it, but, but, but I think it's worth it, you know, and, and the worst feeling ever is feeling like you're having to rush choreography or, or that people are not prepared enough or the director doesn't know how he wants to shoot it, you know. That's not a nice feeling, but on this movie we had, a, we had a, everything set up We had an incredible team and, and we had enough time and, 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 and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what we did. As you could see it in this, uh, what I see in the trailer, you could see how great it looks and that's counts, I think. You got your own hands woman, I read, with Gina Carano um, on your side. What was it? To, how was it to work with her? Gina's a sweetheart. I love working with Gina. You know, I call her sis. Because she's, she's like my sister by the end of it. You know, we were so close and, um, you know, she's such a sweet lady. You know, first and foremost, she's a good human being. She's a good person. She has her heart is completely in the right place. She's lovely to be around. She's gracious and humble and polite. And, 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 and you know, these things are important as a human being. Now, in terms of the character, you know, as a henchwoman, you don't get a better henchwoman than Gina Carano. She's the most badass woman on the planet. I mean, she's so sweet. And then when you see her doing uppercuts and, and, and fighting with, with a, you know, Colossus and all of that, you're just like, you know, she is, she is incredible. You know, and, 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 
and so you know especially to someone like me that, that's just trying to learn and trying to grow and, and you know learn physically and everything you know being around her and seeing her and, and how she does things you know she, she it was a dream to, to, to work and, and to learn from from Gina you know and I can't wait to work with her again what I read today on uh, Wikipedia was that a, is a reshoot of Deadpool this November. Uh, did the script change so much that it needed, or is some things we wanted to make it better? It was really just some specifics. They were just we were just um, making things in the plot a little bit more clear. You know, uh, sometimes in cinema you have to spell things out a little bit more than you thought. So um, you know, we just were make we're, we're making the plot a little bit more. Clear. What is for you as an actor the greatest fun? To see the audience laugh and um, liking the movie go out with a smile? As an actor, what's my, my, my greatest fun? Yes, did you enjoy when, when the audience see that the, the movies, that they have good times with it? It's ex I I'm, I'm funny, my friend. I'm really funny. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'd like to think I'm quite a selfless person, but I think my answer is going to be extremely selfish because... I like the shoot. <laughs> I like it when I'm shooting. That's my greatest joy as an actor is when I'm working on it. Is when we work, when we're, we're there as a team and me, Tim and Gina and Ryan are trying to hash out the scene and trying to make it work and when it's not quite working. And that's what I love. And, and, and somehow when the movie comes out, somehow I love it slightly less, you know, and, and, and somehow I kind of let go of it more and it kind of feels like its own entity and like it's kind of left me. Kind of feels like he's graduated out of the home, you know. Like it's my child, but it's gone. And, and um, so I'm, I'm, I'm never really too preoccupied about when it comes out, and I never really think too much about how people are receiving it because I've already got an idea in my head of how I feel about it, of what I think I could do better, what I think I can improve on for next time, what I've learned from it, and whether I like it or not. And, and ultimately, box office or audience. Uh, feedback isn't really going to change how I feel about whether I like it or not. So um, that was quite a selfish answer. <laughs> no problem. I, I, I see that you have fun when you shoot in the movies, and uh, this I see and uh, this gets yeah. I like that uh, this, this feeling comes comes over over when I see the movies. So it wow. was great. So thank you very much for answering my questions, and still have a nice day in London with many interviews. I think. And maybe we meet in person the next time for a next movie or something. I hope so, my friend. I hope so. Thank you very much. Bye.